ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد اولكم اول اوف يو دير برادر اند سيسترز وي كونتينيو باذن الله ان ذا سيمينار امونغ ذا برادرز هير ات ذا اسلاميك سنتر اوف باوند بيتش entitled the path of happiness at-tariq ila as-sa'ada tahqiq as-sa'ada the path to happiness rectification and unity inshallah ta'ala we gonna i'm gonna share with you inshallah ta'ala some benefits from our noble shaykh al-allam al-dr salih bin fawzan al-fawzan hafidahu allah ta'ala wa غفر له ولوالديه وللمسلمين والمسلمات امين الشيخ منشن ايه والله سبحانه وتعالى سد من سوره هود يوم ياتي لا تكلم نفس الا باذنه فمنهم شقي وسعيد Talk about the day of the judgment. On that day, the people they will split into two groups. There are those who are min al ashqiya, the wretched and al iyadu billah, and those who are happy. May Allah make us from the mameen. فأما الذين شقوا ففي النار لهم فيها زفير وشهير خالدين فيها ما دامت السماوات والارض الا ما شاء ربك عطاء غير مجدود قال اخبر سبحانه وتعالى ان الناس ينقسمون يوم القيامه الى شقي وسعيد ذا الله سبحانه وتعالى انفورم ذا ان القران ذا ان الدي اوف جادجمنت ذا بيبل ذي غانا بي اون تو تو جروبس those who are happy and may Allah make us and you from the mameen and those who are not those who are successful and those who are ruined and destroyed wa ayyad billah wa bayyana jazaa kull min al fariqain haula'i fi al janna wa haula'i fi al sa'ir and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the reward for those people as for the one of them they're going to be admitted in the jannah walhamdulillah may Allah make us and you from the mameen while the other they will be casted in the blazing fire of hell walayyadu billah we seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that wa hadhihi ash-shaqawa wa as-sa'ada mabniyatan ala ma qaddamuhu fi dunyahum min al-a'mal something important that we should always remember that this end result of these people in the day of judgment those who are happy and joyful and successful and those who are not it is based on what they have achieved in this life it is based on their actions and what they have achieved in this life from actions fasa'idu wa man amila a'mala salihah fi hayatihi qabla mamatihi wa ash-shaqiyu huwa man farrata fi al-'amal wa kafara billahi 'azza wa jalla fa'ataahu al-mawtu wa huwa muflisun min hayatihi ad-dunya ومن حياته الآخرة خسر الدنيا والآخرة فلا الدنيا بقيت له ولا الآخرة سلمت له نسأل الله العافية He said as for a Sa'id the happy person the person who's going to be happy on يوم القيامة and may Allah make us a new from the mameen he's going to be happy because that person he or she they do righteous actions in his life they perform righteous actions before they die as long as they breathe and they still alive they always remember that they are here to be good servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore they perform actions of righteousness actions of righteousness 
They are mindful of that. They choose obedience over disobedience. They choose Tawheed over Shirk and Sunnah over innovation, over innovations. They choose to adhere to the way of the Salaf, the way of the companions over the false ideologies and methodology that was invented and innovated by certain individuals and put them out there. They says, no, I gotta adhere to the Quran and the Sunnah because that's what I'm Muslim. I have to practice the sound Islam. There is only one correct Islam. It's not this Islam for this country and another version for this time or this place. There is only one Islam, the Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, with. And I'm going to do my best to try to be a good Muslim. That's what that person should do. We all should be that person. That we should try to be a better Muslims, better servants of Allah. And we should be aware of these ma matters. We can't just like tag along and follow any wave and ride any wave that come our, our way. Why well, we have to wait? The same way if you're waiting to catch a bus, for example, you don't just jump on any bus, just stop in your bus stop. You know, you look, this bus ain't going where I'm going. Many few buses they're gonna go by you and you're still waiting right there. People think like, hey, I see like a couple buses pass by. Why didn't you jump on one of them, man? He said, they're not going where I want to go. They're not going. They're not taking me where I want to be. <coughs> Likewise, be that. They're not going to take you where you want to be, Abdullah. Okay? Innovation, they're not going to take us where we're supposed to go. We want to make it to the Jannah. Innovation do not lead to the Jannah. Only Sunnah. Adhering or following the the uh, innovated methodologies that's, that oppose what the Sahaba were upon, that's not going to take us where we supposed to be. All right, so when the people are doing this or calling you to this or you see them embarking on this or that, then you're like, hey, listen, we're supposed to make it to the Jannah and there's only one way. Wa shaqi, the Shaykh said, those who are rich, then the, they're going to be ruined and destroyed on Yom Al-Qiyamah, they're the one who's negligent. They neglect actions, Billah. They don't do righteous actions. Yes, she is a Muslim, he is a Muslim, but they don't want to do what, what, what they're supposed to do. They don't want to change their lives for the better. they just Muslim by affiliation, as this is the case with many people. They just because they were born in some Muslim country and they think it's enough. It's not enough. It's not enough to just be a Muslim by affiliation, by association. Even if that country or that city is Mecca in matter of fact, it's not going to give you no edge until you learn the deen of Allah. Take it from its proper sources once again, the book of Allah, the sound sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu with the sound understanding, the understanding of as-salaf salih who are in the first place, Sahaba to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in, if anyone call into what the companions they were upon, Alhamdulillah, it doesn't matter his color, what country he come from, his status in his life. But if someone try to call us something that the Sahaba never heard of, not even one of them knew about it, we're going to say, hey, we can't do that, man. Because Al-Khair fi tiba'i man salaf. وَكُلُّ خَيْرٍ فِي اتِّبَاعِ مَنْ سَلَفْ وَكُلُّ شَرٍ فِي ابْتِدَاعِ مَنْ خَلَفْ That the khair, the good, all good, is adhering in adhering to the way of the salaf, the way of the companions. Evil, all evil, it stems from the innovations of those who come after them. <coughs> now this person here who is negligent, they don't want to practice Islam correctly, doesn't make efforts, He's, he's, he's losers on both sides. He's going to lose this life and the hereafter. Because if this life pre preoccupy that person from being a good Muslim, because he's ripping and running like we say, he just want to fulfill his desires, want to make more money, want to do this, want to go there, and he doesn't have no time to read, to learn, to practice Islam, to be a good servant, he, that, that this life is not going to be there for him forever. He's going to die because death is certain. Tomorrow is not for none of us. And this life itself is going to come to an end. It's going to perish. It's going to vanish. 
So now this person, subhanAllah, he, he's, he's, a, he's a great loser. On Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when the people, mashallah, are happy and joyful and successful and being admitted to the Jannah and all the delight that is in it, he's missing out. This person, he or she, they missing out. Once again, it's not because of their color or because they came from this country or the other, because of their negligence. Because of them, they didn't practice Islam correctly in this life when Allah has given them the opportunity. Okay? And then, so they're not going to go to the Jannah. If they're not going to go to Jannah, you think, okay, well, let me go back to earth. There is no back, going back to earth. If a person does not find himself in the Jannah, he's going to find himself in the hellfire. Yes. Allahumma sta'am. Qala shaykh, idan ma hiya aswabu sa'ada? Then the shaykh, he, he, he said, he, he, he put forward a very important question. What are the means that lead us to achieve happiness? Hmm? Because everybody wants to be happy, as we mentioned before. Everybody, men, women, rich, poor, that Arabs, non-Arabs, doesn't matter where you live. Everybody is in a pursuit of happiness and joy and stability, serenity, peace of mind. Anyone who is right mind, that's what they want. Nobody wish for problems and chaos and trials and tribulations. Everybody in his right mind, he wants ease, he wants serenity, he wants joy, he wants happiness. So how we achieve this? He said, many people, Sheikh Salah al says, many people think that if they have a lot of money, they're going to be happy. This is it. That's how they look at happiness. If they have a lot of money, automatically they're going to be happy. It's going to bring happiness. He said, this is not true. This is totally not true. It's not true. Money doesn't buy you happiness. Does not. قَالْ فَكَتْرُ الْأَمْوَالِ لَمْ تَنْفَعْ قَارُونَ الَّذِي خَسَفَ اللَّهُ بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ لَمَّا بَغَى وَطَغَى فِي أَمْوَالِهِ وَكَفَرْ بِنِعْمَةِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ The Shaykh gave us an example from the Quran. Example of this individual that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned his story for us to it will serve us as a benefit, as a, an admonition, as a reminder. Harun, this man here, Harun, which is translated in English to Korah, maybe you heard his story before. This man was very rich. He was actually very, Allah has given him, subhanAllah, these treasures that Allah tells us in the Quran that just, not the treasure now, just the keys, see the keys to his treasure is so heavy that a uh, a group of strong men can barely handle it. Not the treasures, <laughs> just the keys. But this man grow arrogant instead of being grateful and seek happiness and adhering to the message of Allah and humbling himself to the Creator. He grow arrogant. And he was a tyrant causing mischief on the earth. Grow arrogant and turn away from the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in disbelief. Therefore, being ungrateful to the favors of Allah that he has bestowed upon him. What happened to him? The story we know, Allah tells us. Allah destroy him. SubhanAllah. Allah destroy him and his, and his, whatever he has, all the treasures, all of his belongings and properties was gone. Allahu Akbar. So once again, money, yes, you need money. We live, especially in our times, we need money to pay bills, to do things, but don't you ever think that money is everything. Don't you ever think that, look, I gotta get more money, and therefore it's gonna take you away from the purpose, take you away from the path of Allah. Like certain people, they get up early in the morning, at three o'clock in the morning, they're in a market, from this market to the other, from this place to the other, no salat, they neglecting the rights of Allah upon them, they neglecting the rights of their families and their wives and their children, nobody see them. Why? Because they just want to make more money. And that money, they're not going to take it with them to the grave. 
Have you ever seen someone, they bury his money with him? No. Or his property? No, they don't. He's going to go alone in the cheapest material, rare on. That is it. And they're going to put him under the dirt. And he's going to be there with his actions. No money, no. And even if they bury his wealth and money, is they going to help him? Is it going to do him any good? No. So it's important, Ikhwan. Now you can have a nice job or a you know, good business from halal, means that are permissible, and stay away from haram. And also don't, don't, don't lead that business of yours or that job of yours, that pursuit of that money, uh, take you away from the purpose behind your creation. All right? كذلك قال الشيخ بعضهم يظن أن السعادة في الملك والرفع والوظيفة والمنصب. Other people they look at oh what's going to make them happy is in position. He has to have like a great position in society. أينا that's what they think. قال وهذا لا أصل له. And once again this is not true. This is not considered. This 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 not not. This here also does not make the list of the, the means that help us achieve happiness and sa'ada. فَمَا نَفَعَ الْمُلْكُ وَالْمَنْصِبُ وَالْرِفْعَ عِنْدَ النَّاسِ مَا نَفَعَتْ فِرْعَوْنَ الَّذِي طَغَى وَبَغَى فِي مُلْكِهِ وَتَكَبَّرَ وَتَجَبَّرَ حَتَّى وَصَلَ بِهِ الْأَمْرِ إِلَىٰ أَنِ الدَّعَى الرَّبُوبِيَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Shaykh, Hafidahullah, he mentioned another example or another individual as an example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him as an example like the, the, the precedent person. If anyone thinks, no, if I get this position, if I be uh, in charge of this, I'm going to be very happy. Allah tells us the story of Fir'aun, the Pharaoh. This man Allah has given him a lot, subhanAllah. Instead of being grateful and thankful, and humble himself, no, he grew arrogant. So much so that he even claimed to be the Lord. He claimed to be God. So much so he was so arrogant that he said to the people, I am your Lord the Most High. He said to the people of Egypt, he said, I don't know of any God for you but me. He denied the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah sent to him Musa and Harun. And they were so kind and nice. And they spoke to him in a nice way because Allah commanded them with that. Allah told them, go and spoke to him in a nice way. He may remember or, or, or be afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we know his story, he drowned. We know the story, the story of Musa and Pharaoh is a beautiful story in the Quran. There are great benefits. You read the tafsir of Ibn Kathir, for example, tafsir of Imam al-Sadi, tafsir al-Baghawi, tafsir al-Qurtubi. And then you read this tafsir and read the story of Musa and, and Pharaoh. SubhanAllah, this amazing story has a lot of benefits. وبعضهم يظن أن السعادة في تنويع المآكل والمشارب والشهوات وهذا كذلك غير صحيح. Other people they think okay, what make them happy if they live in luxury? They just want to eat good and and, and live in good houses and and fulfill their desires halal haram doesn't matter. He said this is not true. This doesn't bring you. Food, clothing, places, and that's not going to bring you happiness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the kuffar, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يَتَمَتَّعُونَ وَيَأْكُلُونَ كَمَا تَأْكُلُ الْأَنْعَامُ وَالنَّارُ مَثْوَ اللَّهُمْ In Surah Muhammad. Those who disbelieve, they enjoy this life, and they eat as the carols eat. And if they die on that disbelief, and that arrogance, and disobedience, and then Allah says, hellfire is, will be their abode. And we live in a time and places that we see that. See? You see the kuffar, they live in big mansions, rare rooms. 
especially here in Florida, drive a little bit somewhere, I don't know, in the island, and you'll see what I'm talking about, 20 million houses, 40 million houses. Yes, some they have it. Big cars, big days, they go to eat in big restaurants and all that, but they are not happy. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Whoever turns away from Al-Islam, from the remembrance of Allah, Allah said for such a person is a life of hardship. Sheikh Salih al he says, don't be deceived by your fake smiles. They're not happy. They just not. Money doesn't buy happiness. Okay? Because Allah says, anyone who turns away from his message, from his reminders, from his remembrance, for such a person is nothing but a life of hardship. Hakada barakallahu feekum. And we, alhamdulillah, you have this. You have Islam. You have the Sunnah. You have Tawheed. Allahu Akbar. But see, the problem, we have to, to benefit from it. We have to use it. To, to put it to practice. How are we going to practice from Tawheed if we don't know what it is? Some of us have been Muslims for years, but we don't see. We don't, still, we didn't get to taste the sweetness of this beautiful religion of Islam. As it was the case for the Sahaba, Tabi'een, Atba'at Tabi'een, the A'imma and the righteous among the servants of Allah. Simply because there are people who make an effort. They learn with sincerity and they say, look, I'm learning so I can practice. It's not enough to just keep learning, learning. You got to learn with the purpose of putting it to practice to the best of your ability. Do what you can and build on that. And also, you cannot just stay a Muslim because you were born in a Muslim country without making any efforts to learn. For example, the Prophet ﷺ, when he was asked which of those, the only saved sect, he said, they are those who are upon what I am upon and my companion. So how many of us will know what the Prophet ﷺ was upon? Hmm? Can we, how much can you say about the Prophet ﷺ, ibadah, his belief, his iman, his akhlaq, his manners, his dealing with his wives, with his children, stepchildren, with his, with his, with his in laws, in laws, with his neighbors, with his friends, in times of ease, times of difficulty. How many? We have a lot to learn. We don't have time to waste time to waste. We have a lot to learn. Alhamdulillah. He says, so therefore, if a sa'ada is not achieved through money, a lot of money, through status in the community, through food and houses and possessions, so how you achieve it? Now, this is how you're going to get happiness and joy and success in this life and the hereafter, through righteous action. Al-amal al-salih. And true taqwa of Allah. Being pious, righteous servant of Allah. As one of the poets says, لَعَمْرُكَ مَا السَّعَادَةُ جَمْعُ مَالٍ وَلَكِنَّ التَّقِيَّ هُوَ السَّعِيدُ وَتَقْوَى اللَّهِ خَيْرُ الزَّادِ ذُخْرًا وَعِنْدَ اللَّهِ لِلْأَتْقَى مَزِيدُ He says, happiness is not by gathering a lot of money. But the pious and the righteous, he's the true happy person. The taqwa of Allah, piety, is the best zed, best provision. Look at that. That's your pro best provision, taqwa, not money, not food, not possessions, not properties. Taqwa is your best provision. And if you do that, and if you're mindful of this, when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is going to have even more for you. Has prepared greater things for you on Yawm al-Qiyamah. قَالْ فَتَقْوَى اللَّهِ هِيَ سَبَبُ السَّعَادَةِ لَا سَبَبُ لِلسَّعَادَةِ غَيْرَ تَقْوَى اللَّهِ جَلَّ وَعَلَى بِفِعْلِ أَوَامِرِهِ وَتَرْكِ نَوَاهِيهِ He says, so, taqwa of Allah, this is the, what, what brings you happiness, saada. Nothing else. 
You're not going to be happy unless if you achieve the taqwa of Allah. You put effort so that you can be from the righteous and the pious servants of Allah. And how is you achieve taqwa? It's by adhering to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of your ability. Learn what you're required to do in this life and do it to the best of your ability. Things that you can do, do it. Don't cut no corners. And do it to benefit yourself. Keep the struggle. Strive to achieve good for yourself. But if you cannot do it because sometimes you get sick, sometimes you're traveling and this and that, then alhamdulillah do what you can. Like in the Salat, we suppose in the obligatory prayers, it is a pillar, one, the first pillar of the Salat. The first pillar. Al-Qiyamu ma'al Qudra fil Farida. The ulama, they said that the first pillar from the 14 pillars of the Salat, as Sheikh Salah al-Fawzani himself mentioned in al mulakhas al-Fiqhi, he says, <coughs> standing, if able, in the obligatory prayers. What if someone cannot stand? Someone sick, old person, someone has bad knees, bad back, for example, cannot stand? Alhamdulillah, this beautiful religion of Islam that is based on ease. Then that person can sit. Sometimes they cannot even sit. They can lay down and pray. Likewise in fasting. You're supposed to fast in the month of Ramadan. But if you're sick, you don't fast. Elderly, that fasting is difficult for them. They don't fast. Pregnant woman, nursing woman, cannot fast. She don't fast. But then they learn how to do. If they cannot fast, what to do? Alhamdulillah, as it is mentioned and explained in the books of the ulama. So, taqwa is when we adhere to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of our abilities and we stay away from the prohibitions. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he gave us, he said, ما أمرتكم به ما نهيتكم عنه فاجتنبوه وما أمرتكم به فأتوا منه ما استطعتم Whatever I forbid, stay away from it. Whatever I command, do it to the best of your ability. The ulama from the Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen and others, uh, Allah, they said, uh, when it comes to doing actions, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, do to the best of your ability because actions require effort. And the people are not on the same level when it comes to putting forward efforts. Some people, they can do it in one way. Some people cannot do it at all. And some people can do it in, but in a lesser degree than the others. But when it comes to staying away from the prohibitions, the Prophet ﷺ, he did not say stay away from it to the best of your ability. Because it doesn't require efforts to stay away from haram. All you have to do is leave it alone. You don't have to climb somewhere or whatever. You just leave it alone. Don't look. Don't listen. Don't do that. Don't click. Don't that. That's all you have to do. But other than that, from the acts of worship, it requires some efforts. He said there are three things that we're supposed to keep in mind that they help us to achieve happiness. A Sa'id, the happy person, the happy person is the one who, when he's tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, going through some hardship, he's what? He's patient. And when his things are going good for him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bestowing upon him a lot of favors and blessings, that person is grateful. And when he wronged himself, he immediately seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is who we are. The ulama, they says, you as a human being in this life, not in, in Jannah, in this life, this is, the, this is who you are. Whether you are tested through some difficulties, decrease in wealth and health and provision in lives, or, mashallah, things are going good for you, you got good health, things are going for you, you're successful, beautiful children, you got married, mashallah, you're being sick. Or, you're committing sins. 
As for the first one, you, you show patience. You're tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصِ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Surah Al-Baqarah We shall test you with some of fear, not all fear, probably. Some, some of it. And decrease in wealth and health and provisions. And give good, glad tidings to those who are patient. Never say, why me, O oh Allah? Rudu billah. Never make that mistake. If Allah tests you on your health, you go to the doctor and they say, oh, you're diagnosed with this or that, cancer or whatever. Say, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Oh Allah, help me to go through this. Never say, why me, oh Allah? Sometimes a person, his son just graduated from high school and then got struck by a car and died or whatever. And then the Muslim doesn't say, why? Why, oh Allah, why? He's still young. He's only 19 and he's gone. Never say that. Never fall into that mistake. Say, Alhamdulillah. Lillahi ma a'ta wa lillahi ma akhad. Allah gave him to me. Allah took him. Alhamdulillah. Oh Allah, give me better. This is the attitude. Same thing. You lose a job. You lose a business. You came out and find that somebody smashed your window of your car. What good is it going to do for you to start yelling and cursing? And this is not the attitude of the Muslim, because now you're going to lose the reward of the of that. He says that the the, the Saeed is the one who, when he's tested, he's patient. He shows patience because you believe in the qadar, the qadar of the qadar, right? One of the pillars of al iman. What are they? Al imanu, al qadar. Khayrihi wahdahu? Huh? Khayrihi wahdahu. Do you believe, this is one of the pillars of al iman that we believe in the Qadr, right? The decree of Allah. The good only? Or the good and? And the bad. Things that we consider good and the things we consider bad. Even those things that we consider bad, actually they turn to be a very good things for us on account that we are patient. As the Prophet said in the sound hadith, amril mu'min. The matters of the believers are amazing, astonishing. Kullu amrihi lahu khair. His affairs, whatever happened to him, is good for him. And then the Prophet he said, he said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened doors of good for him, shakar, he's, he's grateful. Say, Alhamdulillah, hadha min indillah. لا حول لي ولا قوة. It's not because of me. This is from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. I just, I just made the effort. I made the effort. Alhamdulillah, and I followed the means, and Allah gave me this. Like when you go and cast the, the in, in uh, for those who go fishing, they cast what? Reel. Huh? Reel. The reel. reel. All right, all right. And then a b two men, they both of them cast. One caught a, a two inch fish and one caught three feet, three feet tuna. That cost like $50,000. So can the one who cast, who, who got the, 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 the tuna say, I'm better than you, I'm a better fisherman? Alhamdulillah, no, that's from Allah. Both of you cast, that big fish came to him, the small one go to you. As a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right or wrong? The one who got the big fish, he's going to say, Alhamdulillah, SubhanAllah, this is from Allah. Alhamdulillah, has nothing to do with me, brother. Uh, you, you have a better, uh, what do you call it? Fishing pole. Fish pole. You even have a better one than me. But this is from Allah, SubhanAllah. Likewise, you, that's, this is the attitude you have. You get good things going on in your life, first thing should come to your mind is to be grateful to Allah, SubhanAllah. And to thank Allah. in shakartum, nakum. Likewise, you've been tested with tests because you're a human. You're not in Jannah. You we're in this life. We we human. We get sick. We're subject to a lot of things. I know. So you, you have to prepare yourself. 
Some of us, they're like, when something bad happened to them, they're like, why? Why, why? You're a human. Number one, you're a human. And Allah tests you for good. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, and the believer, when he's tested by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he's patient. And that's good for him. And this is not for no one else except for the believer. Wallahu Akbar. This is ni'mah from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. هذه الثلاث هي عنوان السعادة كما قال الشيخ الإمام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله من إذا ابتلي صبر على قدر الله وقدائه ولم يجزع ولم يتسخط وأيضا أيضا يعلم أن ما أصابه إنما هو بذنبه كما قال تعالى ما أصاب وما أصابكم من مصيبة فبما كسبت أيديكم and you gotta also remember the calamity is that befall us is because of what we do man because of the sins we commit we commit sins, we, are dis we disobey Allah, we're negligent, and then Allah tests us, and then we're like, why? Where is this coming from? You don't know where you're coming from? If we rewind the tape a little bit and like what you looked at, what you said, what you did, what you didn't, you find that we were negligent. And every one of us is that person. I can only speak about myself. We have our shortcomings, we have our flaws, we have our Subhanallah, we, you have to be uh, honest with yourself and you should know your, your, your faults and your shortcomings. Alright? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةً فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ No calamity befall you except because of your sins, what you earn with your own hands. فَالْفَيُحَاسِبُ نَفْسَهُ لِلْمُسْتَقْبَلُ وَيُصْلِحُ عَمَلَهُ فأصبحت المصيبة مصلحة له ومنب ومنبه له الله أكبر. said look سبحان الله الله أكبر. when uh, when you're going through some hardship instead of saying why me this is not fair this is أعوذ بالله. Muslim doesn't say stuff like this. Muslim never say this is not fair. why me. look at the kafar they have in it like they want it but لا أعوذ بالله never say that. But rather, if you say, subhanAllah, look, I w yesterday I was okay. Things was going right for me. Today I'm going through all of this hardship. That, that has to do, that got to, to do with, with me. I must have done something that is not right. And then when you check, you will find that you've done something that is not right. And then you try to correct it so that you, you inshaAllah ta'ala, hope that Allah will make things easy for you and remove the hardship away from you. The Sheikh said, see, now that calamity that has befallen you, it became a good thing for you. It became a good thing for you because it, 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 it helped you to repent to Allah. It helped you to uh, uh, rectify your affairs and your matters, alhamdulillah. قال بخلاف الذي يجزع ويتسخط فهذا لم يسلم من المصيبة ولم يدفع بثوابها خسر هذا وهذا as opposed the person who whenever is tested he's why me why this why not this is not right subhanallah this that he's a loser on both sides him following that path it's not going to change anything from his calamity it's not going to change it and with that, he's losing the great reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for those who, when they are tested, they show patience. Okay? Qala, the shaykh, qala Allah ta'ala, wa man yu'min billahi yahdi qalba, and whoever believe in Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set his heart upon guidance, make his heart righteous and guided upon guidance. قال علقم رحمه الله هو الرجل تصيبه المصيبة فيعلم أنها من الله فيرضى ويسلم لأن ما قدره الله لا بد أن يقع علقم رحمه الله he said this is about a man when afflicted by a calamity he knows that it is from Allah سبحانه وتعالى so he's pleased with that and he submit completely to the قدر of Allah سبحانه وتعالى because whatever Allah has decreed must to, to take place. It's going to take place. doesn't matter what you do. 
If Allah has decreed something for you, you cannot escape what Allah has decreed for you. And so therefore, you, 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 you uh, as the ulama, they mention when they explain the, this matter of qada and qadar, especially uh, give you s books of, of, uh, of reference, like the explanation of the hadith of Jibreel, the great hadith of Jibreel, which is one of the hadith of the 40 hadith that collects by Imam al-Nawawi, rahimahullah. And this hadith is a great hadith. In it, Jibreel alayhi salam, he came in the form of a man while the Prophet sallam, was sitting amongst his companions. And when he sat right in front of the Prophet sallam, he began to ask a set of questions. And one of those questions, he says, Akhbirni anil iman, inform me about iman. And the Prophet sallam, he gave him the answer as the six pillars of iman that we know. When you look at the explanation of the 40 hadith in general, and especially this hadith, the hadith of Jibreel, by Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan, Sheikh Ubaid, and other mashayikh, subhanAllah, you will find they give you uh, the, the, the fruits, thamarat al-Iman bil qada'i wal qadr, the fruits of having belief in the qadr, what is the fruits? What, what you gain? What you get? What is it there for you when you believe in the Qadr? How this is going to help you in your life? One of the, the, the best fruits, they says, that you be pleased. Whatever happened to you, you're not going to freak out like some of us do. Some of us, they freak out for anything, right or wrong. He's driving 65 an hour, mashallah, all three lanes, mashallah, empty, and he's happy, right? Oh, mashallah, nice ride, right, brother? Yeah, nice ride. Then they encounter what? Traffic. What happened? Huh? That's it. Switch the channel now. Ah, oh, this is not right, man. Ah, oh, do we See, you told us to come this way. Now, his, especially it's worse if his mother of his wife. He just was telling his wife, man, we have a good time, mashallah, beautiful trip, Allahu Akbar, I'm so happy you're here, alhamdulillah. They encountered the traffic, you told us, it's all your fault. You told us to come this way. I should have never ever listened to you. You always get us in trouble. Astaghfirullah. Right? Astaghfirullah, that's how you, astaghfirullah, like that. No, relax. Even if the wife, for example, says, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know, subhanAllah, I told you to come this way. He will, well, what should he say? This is a Salafi brother, okay? What should he say to his wife? Huh? Sorry, alhamdulillah. No, don't worry. Why, why, you're, why are you apologizing? It's okay. We didn't know about this, right? Alhamdulillah. Qadar Allah, we believe in the Qadar. Khair lana. This is, this is better for us, inshallah. Okay, we're slowing down, we can remember Allah. Alhamdulillah. You never know if you took the other route. You never know what could happen to you. Hakada. This is the attitude that we should have. Likewise, you go for, I'm just giving you some examples. Because see, we're learning so we can practice, right or wrong? We're not just learning, oh, mashallah, seminar. But we have to come out with some benefit. That should help us. This knowledge should help us in our lives. Right or wrong? All right. You go for a job in energy, all right? Alhamdulillah, you have the credentials. You have the, the whatever they ask, you have it. And you go there, mashallah. Remember, you're a Muslim, alhamdulillah, right? And you go there, and then they're like, oh, wow, yeah, hmm. It's, you have oh good credential, and then they say, "Well, unfortunately, we 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 cannot." What do you say now? A believer. What do you say? Say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, and then he say to that supervisor or manager, "Thank you for your time." Okay, see you later. That's it. Maybe that manager may like wait a minute. What do you say? Alhamdulillah? What does that mean? I praise Allah. 
Well, for what? For this, because before I came to here, I asked him, the one who knows everything, and says, if this job is good for me, then uh, help me to achieve it. If it's not, keep it away from me and grant me something better. They're like, man, we're looking for a person with this attitude. Is it? They're like, we're looking for someone like this. But if as soon as another person, a Muslim, Sunnah, Salafi, he looks a Muslim and everything smells as a Muslim, even because he has the mosque, Kaaba, whatever, because some kuffar, they know. If they look at you, they know you're a Muslim. Especially in certain areas where they are exposed to Muslims. And as soon as they say, oh, Mr. Abdul, uh, yes, you got great credential, but sorry. Oh, because I'm a Muslim. Yeah, you stinky this, you're that. And he want to pull a fight? Why? Why, Yaqi? Why? Just say, no, don't take that route. Say, Alhamdulillah. Everything happened by Allah's leave. Nothing happened because of you. I read a story in one of the books, the books of the Raqaiq, the books so that, 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 that are geared towards the, the softening of the hearts. And we, we, need, we need our hearts to be softened. Some hearts are hard, like a rock. Some hearts are sick. Some hearts are dead. We have to revive our hearts and we have to, to make sure that our hearts are soft. And we have to build the tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The tawakkul. You should believe with certainty that nothing happened except by Allah's leave. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he chose something for you, this is what's good for you. But we, we just like, we, we, we stuck on what we think is good for us. We're wrong. No. You ask Allah, you made istikhara. That's it. And whatever happens, say alhamdulillah. This is the story I'm sharing with you. One of the Salaf. A man came to him and knocked at his door and say, he wants to borrow some money. The righteous man, he didn't have the money. He said, give me a couple of days. Then he looked at from the people he know. He knows someone who, mashallah, has some money. A rich person. He went to him to borrow money, not for himself, for the brother who came. So look at the akhlaq of the Salaf. Now he's going to go borrow money to assist the first person. But that's not why I'm bringing the story. It's what he's going to say when he went to ask the money from the other person. He went to him and said, look, I'm here to ask you for something. But before I came to you, I already asked Allah. So that which I'm about to ask you, if you assist me in it, alhamdulillah, it's because Allah has allowed it to happen. And may Allah reward you for that. But if you said you cannot do it, Alhamdulillah, because Allah did not want it to happen. And we're still brothers. You see? Tawakkul. Same thing we do with one another. Sometimes you find a brother, they know each other for years in the community. Alhamdulillah, Baraka, you're a good brother. You're my brother. I love you. This. One time he go to him, he, the brother is going through some hardship, and he goes, Akhi, you know, I'm going through some hardship. You want to help me? As soon as the brother said, oh, you know what, man, I, I don't, oh, yeah, it's like that, huh? Fake brotherhood. All these years you've been faking it. Huh? You've been faking it all these years. Now you can't even help your brother. What kind of brotherhood is this? Huh? And he now want to talk to him. When he comes to the Salat, he don't even want to stand in the same row with him. Warning against him. Where is this, ya khwan? Astaghfirullah. Who gives? Allah, who gives, man? If Allah didn't allow something to happen, it's never going to happen. Allahu Akbar. Muhammad, does it mean that I have to? Yeah. All right. Alhamdulillah. Allah khair. Allahu Akbar. Naam. Naam. When you reflect it, be patient. Say, Alhamdulillah. I'm a Muslim. Allah is going to test me. Because Allah says, I'm going to test you. Alhamdulillah. What matters to you at that time says, I'm going to do my best to pass the test. When you study in, in any level, right? 
in any level. And then all of a sudden, the teacher said, all right, all right, put everything away. We're going to take a test. What do you say? Why, why me, teacher? That's what makes you a student, brother. Right or wrong? That's what makes you a student. You're learning, you're going to be tested. Right or wrong? That's how it is. Nobody say, why me? They just say, oh, tests. All right. Yeah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. And you do your best, right? That's it. So prepare yourself. Say, look, I'm in this life. I'm going to be tested. And actually Allah tests the believers because he wants good for them. As the Prophet tells us, from the people who are tested the most are the NBA. Allah tests the most those who he loves the most. So when Allah tests you, say, Alhamdulillah, Allah wants. Because there is so many benefits in that. That's another topic to itself. But one of them is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipe out the sins. Now, to kafir the noob, calamities that you go through here and there, wipe out the sins, even the prink of a thorn. A safety pen. You're like trying to do something with safety pen and you're like, ah, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that pain, that little pain you went through, Allah is going to expiate your sins for it. And you say, Alhamdulillah. This doesn't mean that you take a safety pen and keep pushing, poking yourself. Alhamdulillah. Or you look at a woman. Oh, all right. Is it, what is safety pen? Anybody has safety pen? Oh, it's gone. Sins is gone. That's not how it works. It does not work like that. You got to try to be righteous, to be pious, to be good. But if something happened to you, inshallah, keep in mind that it is good for you. Bi idnillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa al-shukr, shukr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la buddha li an yakuna shukran. Haqiqiyan la buddha an tatahakaka fihi thilaltu umur. So we have to be grateful, ya khwan. We have to thank Allah for us to get this happiness and to be joyful in this life. To have serenity and tranquility in this life. Then we have to uh, be grateful and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be grateful and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But thanking Allah is not just saying, Allahumma laka shukr, oh Allah I thank you. No. For it to be uh, uh, the true thanking and to be a true, a grateful servant of Allah, you have to fulfill three things. أَوَّلًا أَتَّحَدُّتُ بِنِعْمَةِ اللَّهِ ظَاهِرًا قَالَ اللَّهُ وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ That you mentioned the favors of Allah, that this is from Allah. Never ever say this is from me. Oh, this is from my people, man, because we're from this tribe. That's why we got it like that going on. No, you said this is from Allah. Huh? والاعتراف بها باطنا بأن يعلم أنها من الله ويشكر الله عليها ولا يظن أنها حصلت له بقوة وحوله. The first one you mentioned the 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 نعم of Allah, the favors of Allah. And then the number two, you acknowledge that they are from Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Has nothing to do with you and your skills. There is a lot of people when you look. There's a lot of people they have more skills than you and they didn't achieve what you achieved. Wrong. They have more skills than you, but they didn't get what Allah has given you. Naam, it's good to follow the means. This doesn't mean that, okay, don't do anything and Allah is going to give you. Yes, Allah is able to do all things, but Allah te teach us also that we have to follow the means. But don't depend on the means. You follow the means, the proper means, but you depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the Sahabi, the companion who came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said he, he has a camel riding, a riding animal, let's say a camel. And قال للرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم أعقلها أم أدعوها وأتوكل He said about his camel, should he tie it to a pole or something? Or just, just leave it and have trust in Allah. He says, tie it down and put your trust in it. You take the means, the lawful means, 
the proper means and you depend on Allah. You, it happens, you say Alhamdulillah. If it doesn't happen, you say Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Ayna am barakallahu fikum. What talit, wahu muhim jiddan, and yesrif al abdu hadihi ni'ma fi ta'ati Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wala yesrif wa fi ma'asillah. And the third of these pillars of shukr, as the ulama they call them, arkan al shukr, thalatha, the third one, the shaykh said, is very, very important that you do your best and try always to use all the favors and the blessings of Allah upon that which is pleasing to Allah. Never use the favors and the blessings of Allah to disobey Allah upon sins and disobedience of Allah. Who can give me an example of the favors of Allah that we suppose use in, 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 in upon obedience to Allah, not upon disobedience to Allah? Give me now. Well, you have money, for example, use it. Spend on yourself, on your family. Go for hajj, give zakat, help the poor, the needy. Build a masajid. These things, help the, 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 the orphans. Now, nah. don't go for vacation, haram. Buying bad things with it, with Iyadu Billah. Now, nah, another example of favors and blessings. The sight, the vision. This is a great ni'mah. Have you ever closed your eyes for 10 minutes and tried to drive? Please don't do it. <laughs> don't even try it. Have you ever tried to go home, not even outside, have home, go at home and put a what? What do you call it? Blindfold. Blackfold? Blind. 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 Maybe black color. The, the, the material is black, okay? All right. Blindfold. And then try to do something in your house. You can even make it to the bathroom. Very wrong. Just blindfold yourself in your home that you've been there for 10 years. And still, man, you can't even know where the salt shaker is. And you're like, subhanAllah, this is ni'mah from Allah. So don't use it for disobedience to Allah. What else? The health. Health. Ay, naam. Naam. Knowledge. Knowledge, ahsan. That's a favor of Allah. What are you going to do with it? What else? Time, Ahsan, time is a great ni'mah. What are you going to do with this time? Waste it in here and there and that, Lakers, Falcons, I don't know what. What are you going to benefit from watching those guys? No, you do, you do what's good. But try to learn some Arabic, some Quran. You go exercise. You go and play some football. You go play some basketball and get some sweat. But you don't spend like 16 hours a day watching some games. What's that, what's that gonna help you? It's not gonna help you no way. It's not gonna like increase you in iman or, or in wealth or nothing. What else from the favors of Allah? Naam? Here in Ahsan, you hear what's halal. You hear the haq when the truth came to you. You listen to it. You listen to the Quran. You listen to the advice. You listen to your parents when they advise you what is good for you. Naam? Huh? Hands and feet, I know, hands and feet, that's a great ni'mah. Use them to go, like the masajid, use them to go to that which is good. Come to the masjid, go visit your parents, visit the sick, go to work, go to school, do what is good. Your hands also, use them to do good things, not bad things. Do your homework. Do your homework. Oh yeah, nah, that's no doubt. Thank you for the advice. I know. Uh -huh. The tongue, ahsan, and many are the favors of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us, ikhwan. It's easy to say these things. Any one of us can pull out something from the internet, say, why well, are we going to do this and do this? But in the end of the day, it's me and you, man, that we have to pay attention to these things. That we have to turn to Allah and ask Allah to protect us. We, should, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who, when they listen to the speech, they follow it. And they put it to practice. Zakum Allah khair barakallahu fikum wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam 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 wa sall